I just found out about this stuff called modular synthesizers and it's like Legos where instead of building a sculpture um, you build a synthesizer and you can buy modules from different companies that make all sorts of cool stuff so I kind of got like a starter kit this is called the make noise o coast and it's got seven modules it's got um, a MIDI controller it's got some utility functions an oscillator Th this module um, controls like the sound of the oscillator um, these these two things are called envelope generators which um, generate voltages that you can use to make uh, control your sound and then it's got a mixer um, amplifier section and then over here I've got the rack um, the conventions called Euro rack where um, all the modules have a certain size and a certain communication protocol called control voltage um, so I can buy modules and put them in this rack and my kind of starter kit can can talk to that um, so the first module I have is called a spring reverb module and um, that's There's, there's the faceplate of my reverb module, and you might notice that, oh, I have one other module. This is an amplifier, but it doesn't do much right now. Um, it looks empty, right? Because I, I got the DIY version. Shit. You, you get about a third off if you buy it unassembled. So um, I may have made a mistake, because here are all the parts I have to solder together. Um, and the cool thing about this re spring reverb module is that it uses an actual spring. So it'll, it'll play the sound into this end and pick it up on this end, and give you those reverb sounds. So I thought I'd do a little build video. Let's go. Okay, here are the components of the kit. We got the main board with its like, these are like the smarts of the system. And then the control board has the jacks and the knobs and sliders that the user interacts with. It's got a nice metal faceplate here and this the spring container that I talked about. And um, I'm getting a little bit nervous about the soldering. Like, look at this. I'm quite nervous. I, I thought it was kind of cool, like, look at their curvy traces, you know, they put some love into this. These are hand-drawn traces, I bet. Looks pretty nice, eh? Bifaco Spring Reverb. Bifaco provided some great instructions here, and there's even a website. And something they emphasize a lot of times is to take things slowly. So I sorted the resistors and um, organized them by, like, the quantity, which helps me, which helped me decipher this and label them all. And um, after doing that, I really recommend taking this very carefully because the colors are super similar. Some of these rows are only off by one color. And um, oh, by the way, this is control. This is um, half of the components on the control board. I'm, I'm soldering in these resistors right now. And I found a tip in another video about this exact module. This tip is to um, put in all the resistors and solder them from the top side. Because normally what people do when they solder stuff like this is they pop in the components a couple at a time and then they, they bend the leads to hold the component in place and flip the board over and solder it from the back side. But with this, you don't have to flip the board over, which lets me pop in like all um, 48 resistors and solder them at, at the same time. So it's a huge time saver, so definitely do that. Um, the only thing I can contribute, the only tip I can offer here is when you go to get solder, get this, this thin gauge solder here. Uh, oftentimes like beginner kits like Radio Shack and stuff for soldering will sell you this really chunky fat solder and it's a total drag. Um, this thin solder is a little scary at first but it, it works great and if you need more solder, which you usually don't, you can just feed it in faster. I'm checking in. I have to work as fast as I can because I need to leave. I need to GTFO, okay? So, let's take a look at this. I've soldered up the two boards. This is the control board, which will have all the user interaction stuff on it. And this is called the main board, which has all the smarts. done this has been a super long project I think this would be fun if you had a lot of time to do it calmly and peacefully but for me when I was putting this together I was really racing against the clock because I had to travel and sure enough once I built the whole thing it was behaving uh, a little oddly um, when I turned this input gain above 20 or 30 percent 
the input to the spring would go haywire, the springs would rattle, and this thing would go red, 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 red. Um, so anyway, I took the whole thing apart and checked all the solder joints and, and re-soldered all the ones that looked a little bad. And I think in the process, I saw um, a solder bridge and I, and I got rid of it by flicking it with my soldering iron. And I put it back together and luckily it worked. So, ooh, dodged a bullet there. Um, you know, after you sink uh, $200 and five or 10 hours into this, it would have been a big drag if it uh, didn't work. So I think I would only recommend this to the um, highly dedicated nerds. Um, you, you, you do learn some doing it, but you're mainly, mainly learning like how to be careful. You're not learning like electrical engineering other than seeing it and you know, maybe asking questions. Um, so I don't think that the $200 price can be justified by saying it's like an educational um, thing. But anywho, it's over. I don't think I'm gonna do kits like this in the future unless I have a lot of time um, to kill and I just want to go zen on my kit. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.